Most of the time you use a large language model, it's on someone else's server up in the cloud. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard about running AI models locally on your own machine. And I've talked about this before and even showed you how to do it, but this time it's a little bit different because we're going to be focused on actually creating value with your local AI large language models. As we know, one of the main benefits of running an AI large language model locally is the fact that you don't have to pay for the inference cost. It just runs on your local hardware and costs electricity, much cheaper than an open AI or Google API. Sure, having a free version of ChatGPT that you can use on your computer at any moment is pretty awesome, but the bigger story is that you can actually use these local models to develop new apps that are powered by AI without spending a ton of money on inference costs from other providers, not to mention total undivided control over your models. To run our local LLMs today, we're going to be using Docker. Why Docker? Well, it is absolutely the fastest and easiest way to get a local LLM running on your system if the goal in mind is actual development, building apps or AI agents, testing, iterating upon them without any cloud bill headaches. Best part is that Docker actually sponsored this tutorial for us, which helps keep the channel lights on, and of course, this is zero upfront cost to you. To get started, we're simply going to download Docker Desktop. You can see there are a bunch of different options, whether you're on Mac or Windows, or even Linux. By the way, if you are on Windows, make sure you click AMD64. I don't think many of you out there are running ARM64 architecture for Windows. I'll go ahead and click on Download for Windows AMD64, and I'll go ahead and click the file to begin install. It's pretty simple, one click installs Docker Desktop for you, no headaches really behind this. What I will say though is you're going to want to make sure you have some sufficient disk space it's not that Docker itself takes up a lot of space, but the large language models that we're going to run locally do take up some space. Once you open up Docker Desktop, feel free to log in, and once you log in, it's going to look a little something like this. Now, typically when you would develop a large language model application and use Docker in conjunction, you'd also have to install stuff like Olama, but that is no longer the case. Docker now has a model loader built right into Desktop. We will have to go into our settings though, go down to Beta Features, and make sure that the Docker model runner is enabled. If you have an NVIDIA a GPU, you'll also want to make sure that you enable GPU backed inference. Otherwise, it'll just default to your CPU. It'll still work, but it'll be a lot slower. Now, you're also going to want to make sure you enable host side TCP support. Now, the reason we're going to want to enable this is for that development side of things. If we're already making an app that is using an OpenAI API and we want to swap that API out for our local model, host side TCP support is going to need to be enabled. You can also adjust the port, but if you're not too down with that technical side of things, I would leave it alone. All my examples today are going to be using that default port. Now, you're also going to want to go to the software updates section and make sure that you have everything updated. This is one of the things I actually really like about the Docker desktop app. It's really good at making sure that you keep everything nice and updated so you don't run into weird errors. It says I have to update the Docker AI CLI, so I'll go ahead and do that. Make sure I click the apply button in the bottom right hand corner and we are good to go. Exiting out of settings, we're now going to want to go to the models section on the left hand side here. You can see I I've already got a couple of models downloaded, but let's go ahead and download another one just for the tutorial's sake. You can see under local, these are the ones I already have installed, but on Docker Hub, you can see there are plenty that you can pull right through the Docker desktop app. Small LLM v3 over here I'm going to pull. Literally just click the button and it will start your download. It is that simple to get the model in Docker desktop. Before we move forward, it's important to point out that large language models come in different shapes and sizes. Not every computer can run every single large language model. You can see in terms of sheer file size alone, one model might be a quarter of a gigabyte where another one is almost two. And this one's almost five gigabytes. And they can get much, much larger than that. To make these models run more efficiently and with less VRAM, they are often quantized. Q4KM is a popular method, and you'll see actually all three of the models I have downloaded right now use that method. You can see in the 
the Docker Hub, a lot of these models have their own descriptions to give you a good idea of what they'll be good for. Like, let's say we're developing an app that's going to be used on smaller devices, maybe even smartphones. Well, small LLM 2 might be the move. You can see it's a tiny LLM built for speed, edge devices, and local development. In Docker Desktop itself, if you click on the LLM, it gives you a little bit more information, but oftentimes I've noticed that VRAM or context window are missing data points and these are important. My recommendation to you would be to actually check these LLMs out on Hugging Face if you're not quite sure if it'll run on your machine. For example, small LLM2 360M, it is very likely that that is this model right here with the 360 million parameters, and oftentimes Hugging Face will get you all the information you need, even giving you benchmarks sometimes. Memory footprint for this one is quite small, under a gigabyte, so like I said, most devices will handle this one no problem, but other models like DeepSeek R1 can oftentimes use a lot more RAM than that. A pretty good way to know, honestly, is by the size of the download itself. If a model is smaller, like 5 gigabytes or so, it might not be too difficult. But some of the less quantized full parameter models, psh, almost 40 gigabytes, I'm not even sure that would run on a top of the line RTX 5090. Now, if you do end up running a model that's a little bit too large for your computer to handle, don't sweat it, it's not going to break your computer or anything like that. Worst case scenario, your computer's gonna freeze up and you'll have to restart it. Docker Model Runner is still in beta and it currently doesn't have any safeguards to prevent you from just launching a way too oversized model. Alright, so that model I just downloaded, small LLM3. If I want to test it out, make sure everything is working, all I have to do is press this run button right on the side, and instantly it pulls you into a chat window and you can start chatting with your large language model. Write me a short story about a family of ice cubes and include a twist ending. What's pretty cool is as I test this model, you can actually see my GPU usage spike up and skyrocket as it's processing this request. And bam, it starts to roll through, gives you a pretty nice, honestly, decently sized output for the size of the LLM we're running. In a dimly lit freezer, a family of ice cubes lived in a small insulated box. Gives us a whole rundown of the family. The twist ending is that the ice cubes were never just ice. They were a family of humans who had been transformed into blocks of water to preserve them from global catastrophe. Anyways, you guys get the idea. Super easy to get a large language model downloaded and running locally with Docker Desktop. Let's talk about making it work for what you you want to develop. Oh, and by the way, do not click this red trash bin. That will delete your large language model off your disk. If you want to exit the chat, just press this button over here, this arrow, and it will take you back. All right, with some basic prerequisites out of the way, let's talk actually creating value. You know, developing that creative app idea powered by AI that's lodged in the back of your mind. This is where we really start to see Docker Desktop differentiate itself from other apps that run AI locally on your machine. The setup that you you see before you is a really simple demo showing how Docker Desktop can be used just like an API from OpenAI or Google serving an LLM but running entirely locally on your computer. This demo app that I've built comes in two parts. You can see the whole thing's contained with just a couple of files and this HTML code and this Python code make the whole thing run. So the Python code, which I've named serverapp.py, is just that, it's a server. Kind of like a mediator between our actual user interface and the large language model that is running on Docker Desktop. Now this file, index.html, is that user interface. Literally just some HTML code that gives you a basic chat box. Now, the way that I get this app running is through VS Code. Make sure I'm highlighted on serverapp.py, and in the top right-hand corner, I click Run Python File in Dedicated Terminal, and it will spin that server up. To actually access the user interface, we're simply going to want to go to this link on our browser, but in VS Code, you can just go over it and then follow link, and it will automatically open it up in the browser. You can see not much going on here for the user interface or the app. It's very bare bones, but as long as Docker desktop is running over here, I can type anything I want into this prompt. Amazing bumblebee facts. Send prompt and it's going to go ahead and actually ping Docker desktop and get a response from the model. And bam, there it goes directly in my app, my user interface. Obviously, the app you're going to be developing is going to be a little bit better than my rudimentary chat GPT clone, 
but it's a great proof of concept to show you how it can work exactly like an API without any of the upfront API costs. I'm going to have this little demo app available to you guys for download in the description if you want to try and build off of it, but I suspect a lot of people are already developing apps and using OpenAI APIs, Google APIs, etc. The conversion here would be pretty simple and only save you money in the long run. Now, the way that our app actually contacts the Docker desktop to get chat completions is through this Docker API URL. It's localhost, of course, on that default port. Again, you could change that if you wanted to. Engines llama.cpp v1 chat completions. If I want to change the large language model that it's asking Docker desktop for, it's a really simple change to the code. For the payload here, under model instead of AI slash small LLM3, I can ask for something with a little bit more brains. AI slash deepseek r1 distill llama. And you can see in Docker model runner, I have that model downloaded. You could have, you know, 10 different models to pick from. And if your hardware is good enough, even spin up multiple LLMs and create an app that works with them in conjunction. Anyways, with our little code modification, let's go ahead and spin it up in a dedicated terminal. Go ahead and open up our GUI. Who created you, my LLM friend? Send prompt. And this one might take a little bit because it's got a boot up deep seek r1 on my local hardware but honestly that was not too difficult at all i'm deep seek r1 ai assistant exclusively by the chinese company deep seek if you go to docker desktop and go to logs you can even see our application contacting docker desktop and grabbing our output also some fun extra stats in here total time to get a response was like half a second What's great too is while you're developing, you don't really have to worry too much about Docker Desktop itself. Once you have your basic app up and running and it's pinging Docker Desktop correctly, you can ask it for any model you want and it will load it up for you automatically and very quickly. You don't have to go and make sure you run the model manually inside Docker Desktop or anything like that. You don't even have to open the terminal. Pretty much just let it run in the background while you fiddle around and explore the possibilities of local LLMs. One thing I will say is that this is a little bit more developer focused. Having apps like VS Code is kind of a necessity and actually setting this demo app up requires some prerequisite knowledge of how to use applications like VS Code. Thankfully, VS Code is pretty easy to use overall and makes installing virtual environments and modules like Flask that are necessary for this pretty straightforward. The reason I'm bringing this up is because there are a lot of you who probably know all about this stuff. Maybe you already have a developer background, but not all of you do. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, if you get stuck in the basic setup process for app development itself, your best bet's probably going to be to actually talk to a large language model hosted on the cloud. So Google Gemini, chat GPT, etc. This stuff is pretty simple. You can see the server app is only 64 lines of code, even the most basic free versions of AI models should be able to digest all of this simply and help you get your foot in the door. Of course, when you've had your fun and you're ready to clock out for the day, at least on Windows, simply Xing out of Docker desktop isn't going to remove it entirely. You always want to make sure that your computer resources are freed up. On Windows, you're going to want to go down to show hidden icons, right click on the whale icon, Docker desktop, and make sure you quit Docker desktop. This will ensure that any large language models that are open with the Docker model runner are going to close down. It's going to free up your GPU and CPU resources for anything else you might do on your computer. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. I'm really trying to hit a happy medium here for the people new to developing apps with large language models and folks who already have a little bit of experience. Any questions at all, let me know down in the comments below. And again, huge thanks to Docker for sponsoring today's video. These are my favorite type of sponsored videos to create because not only is it completely free for you, but if you're already developing apps with AI, this could help you save so much money in the long run. This is all well helping keep the channel afloat. So thanks so much for watching, folks. I'll see you in the next video and goodbye.